The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Aragon LQ Pre-Harvest Weed Control, and Fortenza Vibrance Max Plus Saltro. Welcome to this episode of uh, Soybean School here on Real Agriculture. I'm Kelvin Hepner, and uh, we're looking back on uh, what we learned in the 2021 growing season as part of this video. We're pleased to be joined once again by Cassandra Kochuk, Production Specialist with Manitoba Pulse and uh, Soybean Growers. Thanks for taking the time to join us again, Cassandra. Thanks for having me. So looking back, of course, on uh, 2021, it'll be remembered for the drought in, uh, in much of the prairies, hot and dry. Uh, when you look back on the year, kind of summing it up, what did we learn about growing soybeans in this part of the world? Well, I would say the big story is that soybeans are tougher than we originally thought. And as you say, drought and the wide moisture variability, those are the big stories. And in those cases where we saw a serious lack of moisture, soybeans persevered more than we thought they could. Some locations received almost no rain and those plants still grew and produced pods. It was really quite remarkable. And some of that probably, like we've heard, we've often talked about how the importance of rain in August, it was dry through much of the growing season. I think some of the areas that did see uh, a decent crop at the end of the year, they got that rain kind of starting in the middle of August. Yeah, some crops benefited from it, but some did not. Some had pass through to that R7 physiological maturity stage where they just couldn't utilize that moisture. Um, we saw soybean yields ranging from 15 to more than 50 bushels an acre. And obviously that depended on the moisture. So those are extremely dry regions with sandier soils. They got about 15 to 20 bushels per acre and early maturity. Uh, lots of soybeans around Manitoba ranged from 30 to 40 bushels per acre. And I would say the 40 plus bushel per acre soybeans were in regions that had heavier soils and received better rains. Okay. In addition to that moisture stress, the, the drought, uh, we also saw some late frost back in spring, some wind damage, I guess also uh, points where you could say soybeans are maybe tougher than we think or give them credit for. Yeah, a couple of events stand out in my mind actually from spring. Uh, so one was a late spring frost. Uh, that occurred across much of Manitoba for two different nights. But that, after that first night of frost in the northeastern region of Manitoba, I saw some soybeans that were absolutely smoked by the frost. Uh, the population was greatly reduced. Um, but I will say that not all the plants had emerged at that time. So it recovered well through both compensatory growth and the later emergence of those plants. So just seeing that really surprising recovery after such an intense frost was remarkable. And I will say that uh, there was another event where we had a windstorm in south central Manitoba and some soybeans, they looked like they were gone at one end of the field. And when you revisited later in August, it looked like nothing had ever happened there. So these plants are really incredible in how they can regrow and compensate for loss. And I guess that's something that we should take into account next time those types of events happen. That is correct. Yeah. On the pest front, we also saw the arrival or new pieces of information, expanding geography regarding a couple of uh, key pests that we pay attention to in soybeans. That's right. This year marks the first time we've identified Palmer amaranth in Manitoba. And this was actually just two plants found in a black bean field in the arm of Dufferin. It's a noxious weed, meaning it has to be destroyed if you find it. And they did, in fact, destroy it. But this weed is such a problem because... In the U.S., it has known resistance to multiple herbicide groups, and they've actually cited it as their biggest weed problem in certain states. So this is one we want to stay on top of. It can grow really fast, really tall, and it's a pro prolific seed producer. So we really need to make sure those plants are not going through the combine at harvest time. Mm -hmm. And soybeans would probably be a crop where they, uh, row crops are, are tended to be, tend to be where they, where Palmer has been a problem in the U.S., I would say. Yeah, plus they have so much soybean production as well, so that it would be more linked to the soybean crops. But we're definitely going to be keeping an eye out in soybeans and other crops in Manitoba. Okay. Soybean cyst nematode, it's something that we have known that we have here in Manitoba for the last year or two, but uh, expanding geography there on the map. 
That's right. So back in 2019, we had four cases identified in Manitoba at very low levels. So that was one field in each of four different RMs. We have a new case now identified in the RM of Thompson, and it was identified by an agronomist. But what's unique about this new case is that we saw above ground symptoms, which is what made that agronomist go investigate the roots in that area more specifically. And it, these plants also had visible cysts on the roots, which means there's a higher population of SCN. So this definitely is a bit of a warning of things to come. It can spread very easily through any method that moves soil. So one of those being equipment. So I think it is still worth it for farmers to spend time minimizing the spread of this pest because we can still kind of contain it. Um, there's a good chance it'll still spread, but the more we can identify where it is in Manitoba, the more we can minimize that potential yield loss from soybeans. And stay tuned for more information, I guess, in terms of recommendations and, and strategies for dealing with SCN now that we know it is in this in this area? That's right. Dr. Mario Tenuta with the University of Manitoba has actually started a spin-off project working with this specific field in Manitoba. So far, he's done some grid sampling to get a better look at what the populations are there. Um, so we have some egg counts that we can present to you. It'll be available in the new issue of Pulse Feet magazine uh, that you can find this winter. But we also do have SCN resistant varieties available and farmers can find out which ones have resistance in the 2021 Pulse and Soybean Variety Guide, as well as in Seed Manitoba. Okay. Finally then, Cassandra, we saw this phenomenon in multiple crops this year in, in Western Canada, this regrowth or, uh, or kind of just confused plants, not sure at uh, where they were at in terms of growth staging at the end of the year. We saw a bit of that in, in soybeans as well, green fields kind of at the end of the year. That's right. It wasn't a widespread issue, but we saw a few unique cases of soybeans remaining green. It was either the odd green plant, small patches, or a large section of green toward one end of the field. And in one field, we saw prolific bud and flower growth deep into September when the rest of the field was ready for harvest. These issues appear to be strongly linked to drought conditions during flowering, potentially, and the subsequent shift to better moisture in August that triggered growth. We still don't know exactly what's causing this, uh, but we sp suspect it to be male sterile plants. However, we are also currently investigating viruses. Okay, interesting. So looking ahead then to 2022, uh, we saw frost, drought, wind, all of these stressors on, on soybeans. But in general, I guess uh, one of the things we learned from 2021 is that the crop can still yield after seeing a lot of those, uh, those stress factors, especially when they happen early in the growing season. Yes, and I will say that this was the first year that many soybean growers experienced this type of drought for soybeans. So I, the way we like to think of it is that we're rounding out our experience with soybeans and that moving forward, I hope that we can draw from some of these past experiences and make more informed decisions and really just continue to adapt our practices as needed. All right. Thanks for taking the time to join us again, Cassandra. 